At the very beginning of this week's Torah portion, we're told that God took the Jews out of Egypt. We're told the route that he took them on and that they went out of Egypt armed. Then we're told that Moshe, Moses, took the bones of Joseph, Yosef, out of Egypt because Yosef had told the Jews, God will surely remember you, and when you leave, you've got to swear that you'll take my bones with you. Now, that's wonderful, but it's out of place. We shouldn't be hearing about this now. We should have been told about Moshe taking Yosef's bones out in last week's Torah portion, in chapter 12 of Exodus, when the Jews were making all their preparations to leave, asking their Egyptian neighbors for gold and silver and clothing, that's when Moshe went out and found Yosef's bones. So why don't we hear about it until now in this week's Torah portion, in chapter 13. The Talmud tells us that when Moshe came back to Egypt from his long exile in Midian, he and Aaron, Aaron, went and they met the elders of the Jews. And they showed them the signs that God had taught them, and they told them the words that God had said. But the Talmud explains that the leaders of the Jews weren't yet convinced that Moshe and his brother Aaron were going to be the saviors of the Jewish people. So they went and they found the oldest living Jew, Sarah, the daughter of Asher, one of the 12 tribes, the granddaughter of Jacob, Yaakov. And they said, Sarah, these men appeared and they said that they're going to be the saviors of the Jewish people and they performed some signs. And Sarah said, the signs are meaningless. Don't believe them. And then they said, well, they also told us some words. What words? And they said, well, this guy Moshe said, Pakod Yif Kod, God will surely remember you. And she said, he is the one. He and his brother, believe them. They will be the saviors. That's the secret code that my father taught me, that he learned from my grandfather, from Yaakov. They're going to save us. Fast forward the clock. Now it's time to leave Egypt, and for days Moshe is looking for Yosef's bones to uphold that oath that his brothers made to him to bring him out of Egypt. He can't find where Yosef's buried. He encounters Sarah. He says, Sarah, by any chance, do you know where Yosef was buried? She says, I do. The Egyptians put him in a metal casket, and they put that casket in the Nile in the hopes that blessings would flow from it. The Nile would overflow and irrigate their lands. Moshe goes to the Nile, he finds Yosef's casket, and he brings it out of Egypt. But that leads to an important question. I understand why Sarah would have been the only person to whom the secret code words would have been entrusted. You wouldn't want them to get out to everyone, otherwise they'd be meaningless because anyone could fake it. But why was Sarah the only person who was told where Yosef was buried? The answer to that question is the same as the answer to our original question of why God waited until now at the time of the actual exodus to tell us that Moshe took Yosef's bones instead of telling us earlier when describing the preparations to leave. Because the two are interdependent. For 40 years, Yosef's bones were in that casket, that coffin, that Aaron, and they were carried by the Jewish people next to another Aaron, another ark, the Holy Ark, the one that contained the Luchos, the tablets, the Ten Commandments. And whenever a passerby would ask the Jews, what's up with those two arks? The Jews would say, that one belongs to a dead man, and that one belongs to the Divine Presence. And the passerby would say, what's the connection between the dead man and the Divine Presence? And the Jews would say, that man who's in there kept all the precepts, all the laws that are contained in there. And so the Torah is waiting until now to tell us about Moshe taking Yosef's bones because it wants us to get the message that the entire point of the Exodus, the reason that God granted us the freedom from Egypt, the freedom from slavery, wasn't just to be free, it was to be free to receive and then observe the Torah. Freedom is great, but freedom uncoupled from our mission. Our mission from God doesn't have any meaning. Thank you.